what's your chance of cancer returning during pregnancy, the chance is definitely not zero. It's definitely a possibility. It's a possibility every day that I could get cancer again. Hello, I'm Samantha. If you're new, I am a stage four breast cancer survivor. And by the time this video goes up, I will be 22 weeks pregnant. I'm also kind of sick right now, so sorry if I sound super weird. So when I first posted that I was pregnant, there were a lot of people that were a little bit confused because of my history with stage four cancer. And it was mostly people that hadn't watched my channel before, which is totally fine. It's kind of confusing. And so I wanted to make this video to go more into depth about how cancer works with pregnancy and how my cancer plan has kind of changed because of pregnancy. It hasn't changed too much, spoiler alert, but um, I'm just going to go into all the details just to hopefully explain some of this stuff better and to kind of spread some awareness about how people do this and how it's possible and, you know, just educate people if they want to be educated. It's fine if you don't. You can leave. It's, it's cool. <laughs> I'm going to put out a disclaimer. I'm not a doctor. None of this is medical advice. This is my experience. This is what has been told to me from my doctor and um, my individual situation is different than tons of other people's situations. So I will try to go into that a little bit, but also just know that every situation with cancer is different. And I can't talk about every single one. <laughs> if I sound out of breath, it's because I am. I'm having asthma issues. That's part of like my sickness that's happening right now. <laughs> so first I'm gonna talk about my individual situation for the people who are new. I was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer three years ago when I was 22. And if you are interested in that story and how I found out I had cancer, I have tons of videos on that and tons of videos about like my journey with cancer and all that. People normally get worked up and confused because of the part where I mentioned that I had stage four cancer. And if you're interested, I have a whole video where I talk about stage four cancer and my individual case with it. So if you're more confused by the end of this video, or if you're confused right now and you want to watch it now, you should watch that video because I do go more into depth there. But basically what stage four means for breast cancer is that the cancer has spread outside of the breast to another part of the body that is far enough away from the breast. So like the lymph nodes that are close are, they don't count. And like things that are super close to the breast that like are basically like connected to it, those don't count, but if it is spread to like a distant organ or bone, then it's stage four. Very frequently, this is incurable. Um, as you can imagine, it can damage organs and it can grow in tons of different places and it can become too much and it's not curable. And so then at that point, you try to manage the cancer for as long as you can, but you can't ever fully cure it. Depending on where the cancer is, things can be a whole lot different. That's why some people who have stage four cancer die right away. And some people who have stage four cancer live for like 20 something years and they're fine because they're able to take medication that, you know, manages their cancer, stops it from spreading and just kind of helps them live with the cancer in their body. And it's why some people, now you don't hear about this one a lot and it's not what you would think of, but some people can cure their stage four cancer. And you, if you look this up on the internet, a lot of times you'll see like a page that'll be like stage four cancer is incurable. It's just not really true. In my opinion, I think we need five stages of cancer. Um, stage four where it is curable and stage four where it's kind of terminal. For me, my cancer was in my left breast. It spread to my nearby lymph nodes and also spread to a rib. That's why my cancer was stage four because it spread to the rib. I had chemo to shrink the cancer down. I had surgery to remove the mass that was in my breast and to remove some of the lymph nodes that had cancer in them. And then I had radiation to hit the spots that could not be removed with surgery. That was the spot on my rib and a few other places um, where lymph nodes were that couldn't be taken out. Since the end of my radiation treatment, all of my scans have shown no evidence of cancer left in my body. That doesn't mean that it's not there. Um, there can be little particles all over the place. That's why lots of people wait until it's been five years um, of their scans showing no evidence of disease before they declare that they're cancer free. For me, it's been three years. I don't like to say that I'm cancer free because I'm not like about to jinx that, but I do feel comfortable kind of living like I am because to me, that's kind of really the only way I can live. I can't just go around living thinking, oh my gosh, like 
I have cancer, like what if it comes back? When you have cancer, that's kind of one of the worst case scenarios you can be in with your health. You learn to think not like, oh my gosh, what if something bad happens, but like, what can I do with the good things that I have right now? And how can I live my life to the fullest? For me, I've always wanted to be pregnant and have a baby. Um, so doing that helps me live the life that I want to live. You can say that that's selfish, that there's a chance that the cancer would come back and then I would die and then the baby wouldn't have a mom, but if you think about it, that argument doesn't really make too much sense and here's why. I don't have any evidence of cancer left in my body, so why would I live my life like that scenario is more of a possibility than it is for anyone else? I know that statistically I do have a higher chance because I have had cancer already, but probability wise, a way higher chance of dying in a car crash probably. Anyone can die at any point in any way. You really never know what can happen in your life to change it just completely. And having cancer has really made me aware of that fact, but also not made me afraid of it. So then you can make the argument, is anyone who gets pregnant selfish because what if they die? No, that's absolutely ridiculous. You can't go about your life thinking like that. Look, everyone's gonna have their own opinions about this stuff. If you think I'm a horrible person, then you think I'm a horrible person, and that's fine. You don't have to watch these videos. Um, I'm not offended by random people on the internet that don't know me in real life. <laughs> I'm just trying to explain the situation and why it happens and why people make the decisions they chose to make and why I made my decisions. Now, as far as how all of this affects my cancer plan, um, I'll try to get into that a little bit. Like I said in my announcement video, some people who have had stage four breast cancer can't get pregnant or it's not recommended that they do. This can be for many reasons. It can be because maybe they're on treatment and the treatment would hurt a baby. Maybe they have had cancer treatment that has affected their fertility and they are not able to get pregnant. Or maybe they have a lot of active cancer left in their body that could get worse if they end up getting pregnant. I've explained before that there was a chance that chemotherapy could have hurt my fertility, but clearly it hasn't because I was able to get pregnant naturally. Now. I'm going to try to explain this as best I can, but like I said at the beginning, I am not a doctor. Getting chemo can make some women go into permanent menopause. Usually when you're on chemo, your periods stop completely and you go into a medical menopause state. I did eventually, it took a long time, but I did. Um, and then sometimes your body just doesn't return back to its normal state. I think that this is more common in women who are closer to the age in which menopause normally starts when they start cancer treatment, but it really can happen to anyone and I'm really thankful that it didn't happen to me. As it was explained to me, as long as everything goes back to normal with your cycles and everything after chemotherapy, it's usually safe to get pregnant. I'm going to say usually because I'm sure that chemo can damage something and that there are cases out there where things happen and it's not safe. But as my doctor explained to me, if your periods come back, it's a very good indicator that everything is working as it should. Okay, so about my medications. As a lot of you know, I stopped my hormone therapy and my targeted therapy um, back in October. These were recommended to me for five years, but I stopped them early. I'm not going to go into the reasons why because I have a whole 27 minute long video about it and it's kind of emotional, so if you want to watch that and know why I stopped, watch that. It has nothing to do with pregnancy at all. However, I would have not been able to get pregnant on those medications. While I was on those medications, I was in a medical menopause state. I was not having cycles. It shut, my, it shut down my ovaries completely. Also, if for some reason I did get pregnant, it, those medications would have been harmful to the growing baby. After I stopped those medications, it took a few months for my cycles to get back to normal. Once they did, that's when we started trying to get pregnant. If you're interested in what happened after I stopped my medication, I have a video on that too. <laughs> but basically, all those medications are completely out of the picture because I'm not on them anymore. As for other medications I was taking, really the only other medication that I was taking for cancer-related stuff was Zometa. Zometa is an infusion that I get every six months. I go to the cancer center and I get it through my veins. And it is like kind of a bone-protecting drug. Basically, the medications that I was on are very harmful in your bones, so Zometa kind of helps uh, strengthen them so you don't get osteoporosis 
and also I did have bone metastasis so maybe it can help with that too. <laughs> My last Someta infusion I think was in January so I would be due for one in July. It's now August. I did not get the one in July. Basically I'm not doing that infusion at all while pregnant. I may start that back up again after I give birth but right now it's just not really worth it to me. I'm not on those medications anymore and I can skip an infusion. It's okay. And also my doctor recommended that I do, so I'm taking his advice. <laughs> I'm still taking calcium supplements, which is basically Tums, and also my prenatal vitamins have some calcium in them too, I think. That should be helping my bones, so hopefully that's, that's all we need. <laughs> so that's probably one of the bigger things that's affecting my cancer plan, because it's something that I would be getting that I'm no longer getting because I'm pregnant. But I'm not really concerned about it at all, so it's fine. <laughs> the bigger thing that I think is affecting my cancer plan is my scans. Basically my scan schedule right now is I get an ultrasound once a year on my breast. This is basically instead of a mammogram because um, my breast tissue is really dense because I'm young and they don't usually do mam mammograms on people until they're 40. I get a breast MRI once a year and I get PET scans every six months. If you don't know what a PET scan is, it's basically a scan that can detect where cancer is in your body. My last ultrasound was in December or January and my last PET scan was in March so it was right before I found out I was pregnant. It was actually my last it was on the day that my last period started. Ultrasounds obviously are fine during pregnancy because you get them all the time to look at the baby, but PET scans aren't really recommended during pregnancy. But since my scan in March was all clear, still no evidence of disease, not too worried about it. I'm due for another one in September, but I'm not going to be getting that. Our baby is due in December. I'm planning on holding off basically on all scans until the baby is born and I don't know how it works with breastfeeding. I'm sure that I'll figure that out when it happens. <laughs> Since everything has been all clear for three years, it's not really worrying to me to be skipping this scan. Um, honestly, I thought maybe I could have gone to less frequent scans anyway. You might look at that and be like, oh my gosh, she's not checking, the cancer could be growing and she doesn't know, but, and, and you're right, it could be. Obviously, if I have some concern, if I find a lump in my breast or anything like that, I'm sure I can work with my doctor and figure out something that will work. We can do an ultrasound, we can do an MRI, I think are safe during pregnancy. Um, so there are things that can happen if I'm concerned about anything, but I'm really not concerned about anything at the moment. Right now, I am doing absolutely nothing in regards to cancer. And let me tell you, that feels really amazing just to not have to think about cancer and to really focus just on this pregnancy. I have talked to my oncologist a few times, obviously I talked to him about all of this, um, and I may have, you know, just a checkup with him during the pregnancy, but I'm not planning any scans or any kind of treatment unless there is something that is concerning. Okay, sorry about that, my camera died, so if the camera angle is different, then sorry. Um, I know that it is really possible to um, be pregnant and get chemotherapy because people frequently do. A lot of times people find out that they have breast cancer because they are pregnant. And um, once you get into, I don't know, it's not the, not the first trimester, but later on, um, chemo is fine and uh, it won't hurt your baby. So I've talked to my oncologist a few times. I might check up with him at some point. Um, but other than that, I'm not planning on doing really anything during this pregnancy unless I have a concern. Is this camera is it tilted? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't really know how any of this medication or scan stuff works with breastfeeding, but obviously I will have my doctor's recommendations and we will work something out when the time comes. So I've had a few people first of all ask me what's my risk of cancer coming back because I got pregnant. The concern here is that my cancer was hormone positive. That means that it used estrogen to grow and when you're pregnant your estrogen just skyrockets. You have way more estrogen than normal. So um, you're kind of like feeding your body things that the cancer used to grow. So you think it would be bad and if you have active cancer it can be, but it's actually very interesting. I've had many doctors tell me that there's studies out there that show that getting pregnant can actually increase your survival chances. Basically just your body being normal, doing normal things, it, it, it's good, it's helpful. 
It's actually very common for women to uh, take a break during their hormone therapy treatment. People do hormone therapy for five to ten years. They very frequently talk to their oncologist and say, hey, I was thinking I might want to get pregnant. They take off that year to get pregnant, have the baby, breastfeed for a little bit, then they go back on. After talking to my doctor about it, since I was already on the medication for two years and I have no evidence of disease, it's not going to be super beneficial to me to go back on the medication, so I probably won't. The medications were recommended to me for five to ten years, but my doctor and I kind of had this understanding that I would really try it for three years and see how it went because I was having so many horrible side effects that he was just really trying to get me to that three-year point. I didn't really make it there, but um, we kind of were always planning on stopping after three years anyway, so the fact that I made it too, um, it's not going to be super beneficial for me to go back on them after that. Obviously things in the cancer world are changing constantly, so I mean if there's new research, new stuff out there that shows that I should be going back on it, or if there's new medications out there, um, I'll stay up to date on those. I'll still be having regular visits with my oncologist, I'm sure, probably for the rest of my life. Not, I mean, not as often as I was before, but <laughs> definitely will be, um, you know, checking in. Okay, so I guess one of the questions is, what's your chance of cancer returning during pregnancy? The chance is definitely not zero. It's definitely a possibility. Always a possibility. It's a possibility every day that I could get cancer again. But like I said, I can't really think like that. Um, do I know a percentage? No, and if you've seen some of my videos, you know that I think that statistics are a little silly. And the reason is because they apply to an entire population of people who have had breast cancer, but every single breast cancer diagnosis is unique and very different from one another. So unless there is an entire population of people who are just like me, who have had my diagnosis, who have gone through my treatment, who have had the same results that I have, and then their studies on those people, I don't really trust statistics. And it's not that I don't trust them, like I'm sure they're right, they are, but um, they don't apply to me very much. They're great if you're a doctor and you're like, hey, what can I do for my patients? I'm gonna give everyone this medication and I save 70% of my patients. But if you're an individual, a lot of times you kind of just have to look at your individual situation and try to figure out what's best for you. But there's not an entire population of people out there that are just like you where you're able to look at those statistics and figure out what the best thing is that you should do. The doctors that I have told that I am pregnant have been excited. They've said, hey, like, don't you know that is good for your survival chances? And I'm like, yeah, I do. So the fact that so many of them have said that to me instead of the other thing, like, oh my gosh, you're doing something bad, is encouraging to me. And yeah, I wanted to share that as well because it seems like people think the opposite um, most of the time. And I just wanted to put it out there that it's, it's not bad. It's not bad to be pregnant after cancer as long as, like I said before, you're not in a situation where it could make things worse. Okay, I tried really hard to get into all the details here. I'm so sorry if you're still confused, but if you are, leave a comment down below or you can message me on Instagram and I will try my best to explain what I can. Like I said, I'm not a doctor. If you are a cancer patient, I would very strongly recommend talking to your doctor about these kinds of things because they will know way more than me. But I hope that this video didn't make you see that these things are possible, um, give you hope maybe if you want to be pregnant at some point, um, because I definitely was very hopeful that I could. There's not a lot of young women out there that are sharing this much of their breast cancer journey online, so it's hard to, um, to see those things sometimes. But I hope that this video was helpful. If you have questions, leave them down below, like I said, and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Yeah, that's all. Bye.